Here we are again. Hey. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, very good. You know, just so, having so, fun here. So we were talking uh, yesterday about this, and I said that this would make a really good discussion because this is popping up all over the Latin news. Yeah, but it was super entertaining and intense what we saw there. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so we're so we're going to do a, a little bit of a, of a live reaction because we've we seen bits and pieces and highlights, but not the full press conference. Yes. So we're going to watch it. And uh, I mean, in my opinion, I think, I mean, I get it. He, uh, we're talking about De La Hoya. He wanted to respond. But I don't think that was the proper time and place to, to respond to his comments. You could do it on your social media or whatever. But I think he planned it. I think he wanted the attention. Do you think? Because this this looks very, you know, intense. But at the same time, why he randomly decided to talk like in national television about because, these things? Because uh, Canelo has been talking months about this fight. The thing is, the fight is being promoted on Jaime's side by his old promotion, Golden Boy Promotions. And he had a fallout with him. It all started... I mean, this goes all the way back this beef <laughs> goes all the way back to nine years ago with Cotto. nine years ago with miguel Cotto. when wow. out Al- when, when, when canelo alvarez fought miguel Cotto. wow this happened nine years ago it, it all started with that event so what okay. happened was de la hoya was going through some problems all right he had some drug problems he had some issues as always he basically didn't show up at the fight if i remember and de la hoya what? said he had to go to rehab or something at the time. So that already put a thorn in Canelo's side. Okay. Then happened with the fight with Triple G. Okay. You know, Gennetti. And Canelo failed the drug test. <laughs> and it's weird that you want to talk about full circle because in a way, this was a really unique perspective that Jaime wanted to fight triple g and said he's like oh canelo failed i'm ready to go i'll take his spot canelo was like no there's money there's guaranteed contracts so this all comes down to money and let down but canelo's not the first person to talk down about de la hoya you know he's not but i think de la hoya is not in a position to judge other people or to judge canelo i think in my opinion because you know he just giving himself credit for his career giving himself credit for his canelo's achievements which i think is not fair but (laughs) it was super entertaining yeah and we'll we'll get into it later on (laughs) that you know canelo and it's not I wasn't surprised to hear all these things about him. Mm-hmm. I wasn't surprised to hear all these accusations because I heard it years ago from the UFC president, Dana White. Oh. He said the same he... thing. Yeah, yeah. He. I'll put a, oh, cl- I'll put a little bit of, of a clip up. <laughs> okay. And uh, Dana White just goes on to explain that he doesn't like Oscar De La Hoya. <clears throat> he doesn't like his promotions. Oh. Yeah. And, and this is not news to me, but this is news to you and a lot of people in the Latin community. This beef that's going on. Now let's get into De La Hoya. And the only reason that I'm telling you this is because he is a lying, two-faced, hypocritical sack of shit. And I hate him so much that I love to prove that he's a lying, hypocritical, two-faced piece of shit. But I think this is a good promotion this time because he got to... I don't know. Right now, I want I want to watch the fight. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see what's going to happen next because oh. Canelo looks very heated. Canelo has, has a deep anger towards De La Hoya. Wow. And the problem is De La Hoya is treating him as a businessman and not a friend. Mm. You know, De La Hoya had him for over 10 years. <laughs> you know, way, way over 10 years. And he basically brought him up. It's a promotion. It's just like any other fighter. This is very similar and reminiscent to Mike Tyson and Don King. Oh. Don King brought up Mike Tyson, even, even though Mike Tyson was going to mm-hmm. go to the top, you know, hence my shirt, Mike Tyson. Champ. 
Wow. And at, at the end of this, we'll, we'll we'll talk a little bit about that. But that'll be the next one that we're going to talk about. Okay. Is Mike Tyson and the comparison to the Rocky film, okay. Ro- Rocky Balboa. And just basically 58 years old is not going to stop him from knocking out Jake Paul. Mm-hmm. And I feel that with this fight, this is very interesting because De La Hoya is going at it as a businessman. He's got nothing to lose. His His promotions are tanking. He lost Canelo. Mm-hmm. And I believe he has, I forgot his name, not Reyes, Ruiz, Ramirez, I forgot his name. But he only has one good guy left on his promotion. Okay. And of course he has Jaime on his promotion. Okay. And uh, I think this, this was a smart business move. Nobody was talking about this fight. Nobody cared about this fight. Yeah, it's Cinco de Mayo. Yes. But now there's controversy behind it. Now everybody wants to watch this fight. Yeah, because he got Canelo to go to his level. You know, but that was his- and here's the thing though, this trash talking is between the fighters. This is yeah. what the fighters are supposed to do, not the promoter. This is you know, did, did Conor McGregor argue with Floyd Mayweather's promoter? No. Yeah, this is out of the ordinary. No, and, and did and different. did Floyd Mayweather mm-hmm. uh, verbally? Uh, uh, I mean, did uh, not the other way around, but like I'm saying, did Dana White? verbally okay. attack floyd mayweather yes. no they're promoters they have their jobs this was a personal thing this was a personal beef he could have responded on his instagram he could have responded on his facebook but he's thinking it like a businessman do i make money from this and mm. the answer is yes that's how you do it he's thinking like a businessman I'm not going to come at you with beef unless it's going to make me money. But it was interesting that he was also reading like a script. This was scripted. Yeah. Do you think that this was scripted? No, he had it written down, but it's kind of like me. You know, like I have my little cheat sheet here <laughs> but, to look at but things. But he was literally like reading, oh, I feel. Well, let, let, let's right? look at this. Uh, I was going to see. We're going to do a live clip, and I'm going to put the live clip on the bottom of this video. So we're going to watch there it. There were right some now. really low points in my life, and yes... There were times that work was not my priority based on my mental health, which I had neglected for so long. But that doesn't change the fact that Golden Boy built Canelo Alvarez, period. The company you fought under for four four decades has always had one name, and it's mine. So put some fucking respect on it. You see? (laughs) As for Jaime, he has always dared to be great, just as he's this Saturday night. Canelo's And this serves as a bit of a source full circle for him remember when jaime was 21 years old volunteered to step in against triple g and canelo failed two drug tests though jaime wasn't allowed to fulfill his dream 2018 on saturday night he will do just that fulfill his dream and be world champion <gasps> you know, this looks real, like a real thing. Yeah. Dude, d- that's what De La Hoya wanted. Oh my God. Freddie Roach is looking like this one was shaking. You Freddy, saw it? Well, Freddie Roach has Parkinson's. That's why he has Parkinson's. He recently dominated the undisputed 154 yeah. pound champion. So, Freddie Roach, he used to train Pacquiao. September. What? Yeah. He is the undisputed super middleweight world champion of the WBC, WBA, IBF, and WBO. Yeah. L- looking at this now, I-, I could tell Saul. that's what Delahoya De La Hoya wanted that rise out of him. He wanted this press conference watched. Muchas gracias. <laughs> he looks Irish, right? Muchas gracias. Gracias a todos. What do you think? Como siempre. Bien preparado, con mucho entusiasmo, contento de poder presentar esta pelea entre dos mexicanos, la primera vez en la historia, peleando los cuatro títulos. Contento por eso, que estamos a unos días. Yeah, it's four titles on the line, each, Eso quiere I decir think. que va a ser una gran Fourteen. pelea, ¿no? Nos respetamos abajo del cuadrilátero, pero no, no quiere decir que vengamos a jugar matatena, ¿no? Venimos a pelear, venimos a darlo todo. Sábado vamos a ganar contundentemente. Y, y a eso venimos, que todo el mundo disfrute y que sea una una fiesta mexicana mm. y para este imbécil intento de gente que tengo aquí ¿Sí? a mi izquierda <laughs> que no se le olvide que yo ya vine siendo el canelo a Estados Unidos mm. y yeah. que solamente lucró con mi nombre nunca perdí un solo centavo sino más ganó dinero so, 
¿Ya le pagaste a Golovkin lo que le quería robar? Triple G, if he paid him. Sí, muy bien, porque... Yeah. Si, sí, también. Pero si no, hubiera, si no hubiera metido a mis abogados, me lo robas. Es lo único, lo único que hace este hombre es ser una lacra del boxeo. Robarle a los boxeadores. Para el que esté con él, meta por favor ahí a sus abogados, porque seguramente les está robando. Es lo único que viene a hacer al boxeo. Y a, y, a, y, a, y a lo único que viene es a robarle la atención a Jaime Munguía. No viene a promoverlo. También como también le roba la atención a la gente que hace las cosas para la cocina. Ya no saben si hacerlas como consoladores o como cazuelas. O, ah, ah, ¡Oh, Dios! ¡Oh, my God! I wish people could understand. What? Oh, oh wow. No, no, no. Wow. That was extremely... Yeah. Extremely satisfying. <laughs> wow. We got an ad playing in the background, but um yeah, no, that's that's pretty heated right there. Let me All right, the now we got a few questions for both what? of our fighters yeah. as we are getting set. Canelo is upset. You yeah, see? He, he got he's under sad. his skin. Yeah, he got under his skin. Right. So, that's what happened. Uh, as far as the fight, it's going to be a great Mexican war. And uh, like Mungi and I, we both come to win. But I can guarantee you that I'm gonna win, I'm gonna prevail, and it's gonna be decisive. So you guys are gonna are gonna see a great fight. I want the fans to really enjoy. Oh, this is the translator. Night. And I'm proud to be here and and to to make history. Yeah, the translator is saying what Canelo said. Fighting for the four belts for the first Yeah, it's like a ventriloquist. Then, yeah, yeah, but it's not what Canelo said. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Reality. Well, well, well no. Uh, yeah. Canelo has his grudges against. Uh, Olla, See right uh, there, they, they cut it. Were like, yeah, they cut it. He believe that what De La Hoya said was warranted, and uh, you know where he thinks that you know with the Golovkin fight that there were some some things that uh, Mr. De La Hoya said or did that. Yeah. Oh, here we go. He's a fucking asshole. <laughs> he says it in English. <laughs> he translated. He tried to to keep the, the attention for him, not for Munguia. He's a fucking asshole. He Mungia. has killed his fighters. That's what he do. Focus on your fight. You started Focus it. Focus on your fight. Yeah. So <laughs> Focus on your Ooh. fight. Ooh. Motherfucker. Ooh. What? Ooh. We'll wrap things up with this. <laughs> May 4th from right. T-Mobile Arena, Saturday so night. So I'll leave it there. Um, as you saw, pretty, uh, pretty intense. It was entertaining, though. Very I like it. But at the same time... I think, you know, it was very degrading, like very entitled from oh, Oscar yeah. de la Hoya yeah. to say that all oh, Canelo's achievements are because his of because of him. Like, that's yeah. not fair. Like, I it think, was not because of him. I think I don't agree with that. I, I think, I think that's, that's why he said it. I think he, he, he did everything in his power to get a rile out of him because Canelo is almost very similar uh, to Cotto where very humble, very reserved, very nice to fans. And this guy, De La Hoya, went to a really low level to piss him off. And it worked because he was like, if I say these false things, it's going to piss him off. And that's what Dana White said. Dana White said that De La Hoya is a liar. And Dana White, when he was at the UFC, wow. he provided a lot of documentation to prove that he was a liar. De La Hoya, that's what he does. He's He rocks the mic. He says things on the mic to piss you off. And he's going it as a businessman because, again, very smart because you and I would not be talking about this had De La Hoya kept his mouth shut, sat down, you know, had he just went... Uh, muchas gracias, que yo tengo respeto para, para Canelo Álvarez y, 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 y Jaime, mucho respeto y, y pa, pasa un buen pa, pasa un buen fiesta buena tarde, buena tarde y, y, y mucho respeto, mucho respeto ahora me, me, me voy that's it. No, he didn't do that, right? No. no, I think that's why everybody wants to watch the fight now but uh, it's very low. Es bien bajo recurrir a esa táctica. Like, it's very low. Like, you yeah. use that tactic. But, you know, it is what it is, right? I, I honestly feel that... <laughs> so so this is what uh, fans are, are expecting. Mm -hmm. They're expecting a little bit more tomorrow. Okay, yeah. Some people are saying, and, and he, he's denied it in interviews, 
some people have asked at least three or four reports that that I've seen so far on YouTube. They've asked Canelo Alvarez, "Are you gonna make Jaime pay for what your promoter did? Like, is he gonna take it out on you?" And you know, he's like, "Are you gonna take it out on Jaime?" And Canelo's like, "No, no, I'm a sportsman. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think." Um, See, and, and this is where I'm getting down to the Rocky movie comparisons. It's very interesting how this fight is reminding me of Rocky 3 Why? and Rocky 5. Why? In because what way? In Rocky 3, um, <laughs> Clubber Lang, Mr. T, he goes in the ring and, you know, he's ready to fight. He doesn't like Apollo Creed. And then Apollo Creed goes to stick his hand out, and then Mr. T punches his hand away. He's like, get out my face. You know, I don't even know has been meant in my corner. And he tells him, he's like, oh, you want to hit me? Hit me. And then you see, like, Apollo Creed's looking at him. So, for me, Apollo Creed is <laughs> De La Hoya, and Clubber Lang is Canelo. So, I'm thinking maybe something like that could happen. That's a possibility. The one that... You know, bloodthirsty, savage Latino fans like myself that 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 love chaos is towards the end of Rocky Three. Okay. Mr. T is ready to fight Rocky, mm-hmm. and he tells him he's like, "Hey boy, hey boy." He goes, "After I done crucifying him, you're next to Apollo Creed." What? And Apollo Creed's like, "Oh, he's like, he's like, you just stay out my face." And then he turns around and then he pushes him, and there's chaos in the ring. Before the fight starts. Before the fight starts, there's chaos in the ring because Mr. T pushed him. Mm-hmm. You know, and somebody like me is hoping something for like that because now that's a pay-per-view. That's something I got with my money. And the other comparison to Rocky is Rocky V. Rocky V, he tells him about the promoter. He tells him about Duke. He goes, This guy's Duke is a va- vampire. I've seen promoters suck them dry. And that speech is very similar and parallel. To what Canelo just said about him. Okay. Yeah. It, it's, it's very similar. But you know. I I just. it. How can I say it? De La Hoya. Let, let, let's just put it into perspective. As a fighter. One of the best. You think? Olympic gold medalist. He won the Olympics. Mm. I mean. Oh, man. I don't know. It's just I'm I'm more like I have a stigma. I don't know uh, old Puerto Rican stigma with Oscar De La Hoya. Just I don't know. I remember more his controversies than his achievements as an athlete. When he was in his prime in the '90s, see, I was first introduced to De La Hoya. I'll never forget my uncle Galdo. He hosted the pay per view at, at, at his house. And it was um, Hector Camacho and De La Hoya. Oh, Hector Camacho. Y Hector Camacho, Camacho y and De La Hoya. Okay. This was like the late 90s. And I remember oh, I was yes. a little kid. And, you know, my dad was there. Family members were there. Yeah, it was very big in the Puerto Rican community. And Camacho, Camacho got fucked up. I think he got knocked down the ninth round, if I remember. It was very shocking. Everybody was screaming. It was entertaining. I loved it. So fast forward to 1999, Felix Tito Trinidad. Yeah, Tito he, Trinidad. <laughs> he he made it. A, so so th- there's a there's a special um, thing for the Puerto Ricans yeah, because yeah. Trinidad beat him. Trinidad was yes. was his very first loss. De La Hoya's first loss was Trinidad in 1999. I remember that fight because. Big Pun and Fat Joe came out singing Twins mm-hmm. for Trinidad. And he came out, you know, with, with, with the with the straw hack and won't he about you know, he about pride. Yes. But that was a fantastic fight. And I remember watching De La Hoya's very last fight against Manny Pacquiao. He got fucked up by Pacquiao. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting that the gentleman you see sitting there, Viejo yeah. Colo Lente, that's Freddie Roach, he trained Pacquiao for that fight to fight okay. him. De La Hoya almost beat Mayweather. It was a split decision in 2007. He almost beat him. I remember Mark Anthony sung the national anthem. Yeah, yeah Mark Anthony sung the national anthem. It, it was, it was a controversial fight. Mayweather almost lost. Okay. Mayweather almost lost. It was a split decision, and even Mayweather's father told him he's like, "You actually won that fight, mm-hmm. but it's Las Vegas." I always said the same thing too. Miguel Cotto, 2012, mm-hmm. 
I'll never forget. I watched that in a Puerto Rican household. Um, you know, a uh, good friend of mine, Larry, his wife, Rosie, she's Puerto Rican. Toda gente boricua ahí. And we saw a different fight than those judges. Koro got pissed and he didn't even stay to do the interview. Koro, Koro just walked out. You met Koro. Absolutely. In Puerto Rico. Absolutely. How is he as a person? He's a humble person. He's a humble person, always dedicated to his community. He's the best, you know, always very, very humble person. Hmm. And. <laughs> what did y'all talk about? Huh? What did you talk to him about? Oh, I just met him because uh, he was doing basically a charity work. You know? Oh, you were at a charity so, event? Yeah, I'm a social worker, and he was, like, collaborating with us, with the kids, you know? Mm -hmm. And he's a humble person in general. Yeah. What part very quiet you? person. He's a very quiet person. What part of the island does he live in? I don't know what part of the island he lives in, but he was in Santurce, San Juan, Puerto Rico. Santurce. Oh, okay. So, in Santurce. This I mean, you know... Puerto Rico has some of the best boxers ever. Oh, yeah. Tito Trinidad, yeah. Coto. Camacho was more of like, like on my side. He was more of like a New York Rican. Yeah. But he was still great. I mean, in my opinion, the only real thing that really beat Camacho was uh, Bayamon. <laughs> too soon? Too soon? <laughs> too soon? Too soon? Okay, I'm sorry. You know? You know? You know? That, I don't know. Yo me voy para carajo ahí. <laughs> Una silla azul para mí, para sentado ahí. Oh, my God. <laughs> But, um, David. What, what is your prediction on this fight? Because, you know. I'm very excited. I'm very excited for this fight. I hate to admit it, but I think this kind of things, unfortunately, grab a lot of attention from the public. And if he wanted to appeal into old beef with Canelo to yeah. get the attention of the public. He successfully did. I probably Canelo is going to win because he's a legend and I want Canelo to win. But at the same time, I think he looks so mad and upset that I don't know if that angriness will affect his performance. I really don't know because I'm not an expert, but I, I wish that Canelo can win the The fight, I, at least, is my favorite one. Because Nothing against Mungia, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jaime, he, he's a, he's a young. He's a young kid. Young and kid. He, he. I think this is a good opportunity for him to expose himself. Great opportunity, and again, people want want to knock on on Golden Boy. You got to get exposure first before you go on your own. Absolutely. And I think that's what Golden Boy Promotions is. Bernard Hopkins, a, a lot of people we're associated with golden boy and i'm not hating on it but then again this isn't the first time i've heard these accusations mm -hmm. i believe in dana white and what he says and his proof and i believe in canelo but i think when you get money involved it could really cause a lot of bad blood i think that was a mafia i think this is a mafia here no, i think the this only, the only mafia thing that happened with um De La Hoya was the controversy in 2007. Do you remember that? When he was like cross-dressing? Mm, mm -hmm. And he wanted the photos to go away, so he paid a lot of money. That was so, a scandal. Yeah, he paid a lot of money to the Russian mob for them to get rid of it, but the Russian mob could not get rid of it. <sighs> it the pictures belonged to some stripper he was dating, and the, and the stripper blackmailed him, and she released the photos. I didn't even know that. And for years, he said that it was, he said it was fake. And he hired an analyst and paid them to say it was fake. But finally, in 2011, he came clean and said, no, it was me. I was. He said he was cross-dressed and he was wearing the fishnets. These are some very shocking photos. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely. That was he had the fishnets. He had the boxing gloves. It, it was him. It was him. And that's when you saw he had a really bad drug problem and that's what he was admitting you know when when canelo called him the pinche ma maricon <laughs> that was because of that he was insulting yeah, his manhood because absolutely. because he's straight but you know again it doesn't matter what his sexuality is or what he likes to do behind closed doors but canelo got so heated he went down to that level to throw that at him 
You know, because it's 2024. Like, who cares, like, what he does behind his closed doors? Like, if De La Hoya wants to do that and run a business, let him do it. As long as he's not hurting anybody. As long as he's not doing Epstein or, or Vince McMahon stuff. Whatever. L- let him be. But but th- this is a beef that's, that it goes down to money. But I think it's funny because De La Hoya just keeps making himself in the news. Whether it's him, whether it's these scandalous photos of him. Whether it's him uh, insulting other people, insulting other people, <laughs> including other promoters, like insulting Dana White, now insulting Canelo Alvarez, this is a smart move. I think it's a smart. I, I don't think this was planned. I believe he planned it. He planned it, he right? Planned it because, because he was a scripted. He was he reading from fight. from a script. He made this fight more no because boxing is suffering. Boxing yeah. UFC now is the number one. And now UFC is partners with WWE. Mm-hmm. So now you got this mega house. Yes. Boxing's not what it used to be. Yeah. I think boxing's going to come back. I think we're going to see some great fighters come out from wonderful countries. I think we're going to have some Arabic fighters and mm-hmm. African fighters. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, everybody now is Latino. You're like, hey, you know, awesome. Yeah, but I think boxing is always have like this nostalgia and this classic like... That's why I'm excited for Mike Tyson. Absolutely. I'm excited for the Mike Tyson and Jake Paul, and we'll talk about that in the next video. But Mike Tyson at 58, this is very, very parallel to the movie Rocky Balboa. Mm-hmm. Rocky Balboa is 59. Oh, he's you're gonna get killed. You're you're a dinosaur, Balboa Saurus. Mm-hmm. Mike Tyson, no, I still got stuff. I go, st- I still got stuff to prove. I'm gonna knock this young kid out. Very similar, very similar, like like a 30 age difference almost, j- just like in the movie. And even now with this press conference, like I'm just getting such strong vibes to the Rocky films. And it's interesting that now you could say that those films were ahead of its time. And what will you think is going to happen? What is your prediction about this fight? Mm, my prediction is that, uh, so Damien Mercado, I think one more Damien Mercado. So Walter Mercado is telling me that something might happen like what we see in Rocky Three. <laughs> oh, okay. Something like that. I think um, if it's not before the fight, definitely something may happen after. But with all this hyped uh, action behind it, security might get involved before. Do you think? Well, I remember with uh, Mike Tyson fighting um, Lennox Lewis in 2002, the security guards had to go across the ring. They had to make a line to prevent Tyson from trying to attack him early. Because people weren't weren't going to know what was going to happen. They, they were scared. So if something doesn't happen before the fight, I'm pretty sure we might see or hear something after the fight. But I believe Canelo Alvarez is correct. I think that De La Hoya is taking the attention away from Jaime. Okay. That's Jaime's moment. Jaime didn't even have a chance to speak. Absolutely. Now I'm not even like noticing him. Yeah, like, see, and he... Barely understand what is going on. Yeah, I mean, I get it. Cinco de Mayo, big, you know, big fight for the Mexican fighters. Four belts on the line. That's pretty awesome. That's very historic. And there wasn't that much of a hype to this uh, to this fight. But I think this is going to be a good fight. I think we're going to see some good action. But Canelo's going to win. He's just... There's a reason why Floyd Mayweather fought him. Because he saw something special in the kid. Canelo was... If Floyd Mayweather fought Canelo the way he is now... He would have lost. Oh. And that's when Canelo caught my attention in that fight against Mayweather. And then he also caught my attention when he fought Cotto. And I felt like that was like passing the torch. Like Cotto kind of passed the torch to Alvarez. Like, yo, this is your time. Like, you're okay. now, now you're the main guy. Now you be humble. Now you fight. Okay. And I believe Canelo Alvarez is going to do well. Everybody in Arizona loves Canelo Alvarez. Absolutely. A lot of Mexicans here Absolutely. love him. Absolutely. This is yeah. a big... Mexican community, yeah, you know, they, they're gonna be for Canelo. What 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 Cotto was to New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, and Puerto Rico is what Alvarez is to this region here. Yes. Vegas, Arizona, Texas, they're all cheering for for Alvarez. California, they're all cheering for Alvarez. So I think this is gonna be a good fight. I think we're gonna see some. I'm excited to see. You. We're gonna watch it. Yeah, we're gonna watch it. We're gonna watch it. And we're drinking. We're drinking our beer here. So this is, our, this is our beer. Our single of our beers here. And uh, hopefully it'll be a good fight. We'll have a good time. Absolutely. All right. Salud.